Good afternoon. Everyone still awake? Still awake. Absolutely. You guys are hardcore. You've been here for eight hours and you're still listening. So I have full respect for you to still listen to what I've got to say to you. So um, where do we start? Difficult subject. Everyone you've probably heard today has talked to you about how. Lots of technical details. I've listened to lots of presentations. But we really haven't stepped back to think about why. Why do I care about this problem? This isn't a problem that's a problem for me. I've got other problems. Chinese aren't hacking me. The Russians aren't hacking me. That's what many customers tell me. So what I want to do is just give you a little bit of food for thought. So, anybody heard of FireEye? Oh my goodness. One, one person at the back, there we go. We have a great opportunity to educate you. So two things you may not know about FireEye. When it goes wrong, when Sony were hacked, when Target were back, hacked, when eBay were hacked, when Marcus Neiman were hacked, we were the company they called. We have more incident response expertise and experience than any other organization in the world today. So when you need to know how to solve this problem, we are the people they call first. So the second one I'd like to share with you. Of the last two and a quarter years, there have been 23 zero-day vulnerabilities recorded and used by attackers. FireEye found 16 of those 23. So that's why we have something to, to share with you and really change your viewpoint on security. So this is going back. When you go back to your business tomorrow, you go back to your organization, some really tough questions to think about. You cannot be secure. I look around many of the, the stands today, security is no longer possible. You can reduce your risk, but you cannot remove the risk. Behind me, if your network can be compromised, it absolutely will be. In my experiences, Look at J.P. Morgan Chase. Last year they spent $250 million. They were compromised still. This is not a problem of spending money. This is about stepping back and thinking, undoing 15 years of throwing products at security. There is no silver bullet to solving this problem. You cannot continue to throw money at solutions that paper over cracks in how we do security today. So, this week alone, who saw GitHub has been DDoSed? Hilton had accounts compromised. British Airways had accounts compromised. Last month, Jumalto were hacked. The month before, etc., etc., etc. Why does this continue to happen? Because we do not have the right tools, we do not have the right intelligence feeds, we do not have the right expertise to do this problem properly. And I challenge anyone to, to prove me wrong. And the famous statement that came out from Jamalto and Uber this week, we have no evidence of a breach. I love that quote. We have no evidence, but guess what? Do we have the right tools to give you the evidence? I often go to customers and they, they ask a great question. Jason, we have no APT problem. But then they'll often they'll say, but I recognize now that I do not have a tool that would tell me I have an APT. How many of you would have confidence that you could find an APT in your network today? One person. Fantastic, congratulations. But no one else has confidence. I think that speaks for itself. In our M-Trends report this year, we published last month, where an organization was able to detect, excuse me, they'd been compromised. That was lunch. It took them 205 days to detect that they had been compromised. 
That's seven months of unauthorized access in your business. So I ask you a simple question. What is an acceptable number? Is it one week? Is it one month? Is it one year? You tell me. Is it zero days? Is that what we should aspire to? When we looked at our longest breach this year, one organization had been breached for 2,982 days. Think about what P in APT stands for, persistence. These people will not grab and smash raiders. They come in, they put back doors in multiple parts of your business, and their objective is to cyber squat in your business as long as possible. They know your business better than you do. They know your networks better than you do. Eradicating these people out of your network is incredibly difficult. The next problem you have, cyberspace is asymmetrical. I can buy an exploit for $50. I can buy an email platform that uses clean IP addresses, and it will guarantee me delivery for 10 cents per email in their inbox. I only have to send one email to one person in your organization, and I'm in. You have to be lucky every single hour of every single day to stop that person getting in your network. That is asymmetrical. You have to spend hundreds of thousands and millions to try and stop this problem. We have to accept that this is a problem we can't solve. This is a problem we can mitigate. And when we see the CEO of JP Morgan Chase go public and say, this is a war, there are battles that we will win, and there will be battles that we will lose. I think everyone else in the room can take confidence that you should be able to go to your business and say, we have been breached, but we have a plan. I have a really good saying, fail to plan, plan to fail. Do all of you have an instant response plan in your business today? Anybody? One person? Wow. Two people. Three. Oh, very good. And that's congratulations. When was the last time you used it? When was the last time you actively used it to see if it still works? Two days ago. Fantastic. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. But why have we not got a plan? If we know that 97% of organizations we work with are breached, when you go to your board and they say, well, what's happened? How did it happen? When did it happen? What are the objectives of this attacker? You need answers. And you need answers in a quick time frame. I don't think it seems that many of us are in that capability today. That's not just Greece, that's across the whole of the world, unfortunately. Your next challenge. The hacktivists, the crimeware, the APT actors are all using the same tools, the same techniques, and the same procedures. How do you differentiate? If your analyst has five alerts, how does he prioritize? Which one is the crimeware? Which one is the hacktivist? Which one is the APT? For you, you have to figure out what is your biggest risk. Is it crimeware? Is it the hacktivist? That's where you need accurate intelligence. Help you prioritize, because if they all look the same, you will make some bad choices. Has anyone had to disclose a breach here? That's good. But legislation is coming. EU Parliament are about to sign the EU Network Information Security Directive. If you are a payment provider, and critical infrastructure provider, you are going to have to notify your national cert within a reasonable time frame. We don't know what reasonable time frame looks like. However, this is coming. We need a new way of detecting these threats. And unfortunately, the traditional security technologies that we've invested in 
do not give you visibility to these most sophisticated threat actors today. Quite frankly, the gap between attackers and defenders has never been wider. So really, you have to go back to your business and ask some very simple questions. How good do we want to be at identifying a threat actor? How quickly do I want to be able to contain an incident? Because this all costs money. This all detracts from other things you need to do. So you have to go back to your business and articulate to them, we can do this really well, or we can do this OK. You choose the appropriate tools, intelligence, and expertise that gives you the appetite for fully resilient so that you can repel an attacker in minutes, or you're happy with 30 days of unauthorized access in your business, and you can tell your customers and your employees that it's OK to have unauthorized access for a month. I'm not sure many people in the media would agree with that. However, that is an investment choice you need to make. So to wrap up, my takeaway is 100% security is not possible. We need to think about, instead of, am I secure? Your question should be, are we prepared? And the final comment really would be very simple. How good do we want to be? And I'm going to pretty much, I think that's the last slide. There's some trends here. These are the future ones. I forgot to put this slide in. The impact of these attacks is impossible for you to measure today, most of the time. Is we, we need, and you need to understand that attackers are designing their technologies to evade traditional detection. You need to think of new ways of detecting and removing these people where it's feasible. So I'm going to wrap up there because I think I've delivered my key messages. And if you want to talk to me offline, you're more than welcome. <laughs>